everyone, it's Lil D from LilDevet.com and welcome back to my channel. In this first video for 2018, I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you. Thank you to all my subscribers for all your comments and support in 2017. It means so much to me. And if you're new, I just want to say welcome. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button down below. Today I'm doing one of my most requested videos, which is a follow up to my work bullet journal. I have a different setup here today, as you can see. Um, I, what I've done is I've zoomed out the camera in order to record further away. And then I've put this little vase here with a flower to basically pick up the focus of the camera. The reason I'm doing this is because my goal is I'd really like to show you some of the inside pages of my work bullet journal, but I'm not at liberty to show a clear shot for confidentiality reasons because it is my work bullet journal. So I'm hoping that by doing it this way, even though it'll come across a bit blurred and you won't see the details of what's written on the pages, you'll see enough information in order to get a sense of the techniques that I'm trying to explain. So I hope this works for you. I'm going to do this video in two parts. I actually had a lot of notes and a lot of things that I did with my bullet journal in 2017. So the first video is going to have my top tips for managing multiple projects in my work bullet journal. And then my next video will have what work bullet journal layouts I feel might be helpful, particularly in project management. So if this sounds interesting to you, please keep watching. So the first change I made was to the cover. I have a couple of tools that I like to carry with me, some gadgets as well. So this is the Laheat Lab A5 cover, which I learned about from other bullet journalists, and it's a great cover. It has a lot of pockets, and it also has a wide spine for thicker notebooks. On the front, it has a slip pocket, a gusseted pocket, and then this long, wide pen slot. And I use these to carry my most used tools. So I do a lot of color coding, so you're gonna see a lot of highlighters. Um, this is my most used highlighter. I have a Pilot G2, which I use to take notes. In this gusseted pocket, I have two additional highlighters. I usually have my ID right here in the front. This is one of two of my work phones and a mechanical pencil. In the back slot, I have my final highlighter and my second work phone, which is a six plus. And as you can see, everything fits here just fine. This cover has a strap to keep it together, but like unlike other covers, it actually goes from front to back as opposed to back to front. So to open it, you just simply grab it from the back and it opens flat like this. It has a few pockets like this flat slip pocket where I keep post-its and notes. There's two smaller pockets where I keep smaller post-its and stick on tab dividers. And then this is actually a pass-through pocket where you're supposed to put the cover through because it'll come out the other side, but I use it as a mock pocket. I just fold up some papers and I just slipped it in there. And then it also has two bookmarks stitched in, which I actually don't use. And the reason I don't use these is because since I don't slip the cover under this pocket, what ends up happening is it's further away, so it actually always pulls out. So I'll show you what I did to compensate for that. In the back, it has a secretarial pocket and a vertical pocket, and this is where I slip in the back cover of my notebook. In regard to my notebook, I'm using the Mikel Reus soft covered journal in the graph format. And as you can see here, it's a pretty thick book. It has 300 sheets, which amounts to 600 pages. And currently to date, I started this journal back in November of 2016, and I've used this much of the journal. Now this is going front to back, 
I did have some notes and things that I actually started back to front. So it's taken up that much of the journal and I have this many pages left. Ideally, I wanted to switch out of this book into a new blank book for 2018, but my projects are actually coming to an end by maybe March or May. So I figured it'd be nice to finish off in this book um, so that way all the information stays together. So what I'd like to do now is just go through a couple of tips and techniques that I'm using to help me manage multiple projects. One of the most popular ones, you've heard me mention this a lot actually, is color coding. Um, I use four colors. The blue is for my primary project. Purple is for my second and tertiary projects. The green is for the program, overarching program that goes over these projects. And then the orange is for my department or sub-organization. And the way I use color coding is to differentiate between projects and also entities. So if I thumb through my bullet journal, you'll actually see these four colors kind of sprinkled throughout. And I use it in various ways. Um, I have a, a custom layout that I like to use for a weekly uh, spread. And I use it to highlight my conference calls um, per project. I use it on my index. So on my index, I do not color code yearly, monthly, or weekly pages. Well, the only things that I color code are any reference or note pages that are related to my projects. So I have an index that started in the front and then I actually ran out of room so I had to continue in the back. And as you can see, I have some things that are highlighted and some things that are not. I also use color coding to differentiate between tasks. So this is what my typical weekly layout looks like. I usually have a spread where I outline all the phone calls that I have from Monday through Friday and then I color code it. And then for my dailies, I also color code those as well. For each of my projects, I might take reference notes or meeting notes. And what I do is I just highlight the title at the top of the page as well. So color coding is pr a pretty key technique for me. It's what allows me to kind of thumb through my bullet journal in order to locate information that I need quickly. And what I do is not just color code in my bullet journal, I also color code in our enterprise-wide email system. We use Microsoft Outlook, like many companies, and whenever I schedule a call, I also color code in these same four colors. So there's, you know, they, they match up. So I highly recommend this. I know it might seem like it could be distracting. If you're the type of person that you know, color coding doesn't appeal to. Um, one other technique that you can try is perhaps coming up with acronyms or some sort of a code for each project and then making sure that you always use that as a prefix whenever you jot down a note or a task or some sort of appointment. So that's one of my favorite techniques. Secondly, my index. Um, you know, with a 600 page book, um, I discovered that I really needed to manage my index carefully. So one of the techniques that I already mentioned was color coding. Some of the others that I eventually stumbled on and started doing is, you know, sometimes you might think you need, let's say, three pages for a weekly spread, but you only use two. So sometimes you end up with blank pages in between other pages. So one of the techniques that I came up with for keeping track of those blank embedded pages is I would write down the page number and then I would draw a line from the page number to the description field and I would leave it blank. And then what I would do is if I just needed one page for a meeting or for reference notes, I would go back to the index, see where I had any empty pages and I tried to fill in the blanks. 
Once I used it, I come back to the index. I would write in the description of what I recorded on that page. And if it's something other than my weekly or daily pages, I would color code them as well. So that's a great way of keeping track of any pages. So that way you make full use of the book. Another technique I like to use, as you saw, um, I started in the front. I allocated three to four pages, but I quickly ran out and then I continued on the back. So I actually have a two part index back here. Um, I'll explain that in just a second. This page is a continuation of my index from the front because I was using my pages in a front to back fashion. However, there were some items that I, were, I was afraid might get lost within the pages. So that key information, I started recording in pages that went from back to front. So um, also for 2018, since I wasn't expecting to be in here, you know, I added those pages as well. Um, I'm going into different phases of the project. So I added those pages back here. So what I did was I took this side of the index and I'm actually recording what I logged going back to front, but I'm listing the page numbers in descending order. All my pages are numbered and I was afraid that I would lose track of what I was entering going back to front. So this has proven to be really, really helpful because I haven't forgotten what I logged and I have an effective way to do it. So this one goes from front to back and this one goes from back to front. So that's another technique I like to use. Lastly, another technique that has proven very, very useful is because I have three sub projects that I'm tracking, I do take a lot of notes and meeting minutes and reference information. So when I have long running notes like that, um, I'll create an entry saying, you know, like this is uh, for the scrum call. However, it can span a number of pages. Now it doesn't make sense to have a, you know, duplicate entry saying scrum call, scrum call, scrum call, scrum call. So what I did was I just created one. And then what I did was I started logging the page numbers from the very far left of the margin. And I try to fit in as many pages as I could. And then when I ran out of room there, after the title, in the description area, I continued adding the page numbers. So I went as far as I could. Um, so that way I have one entry in my index that says, you know, this is for this project's scrum call, but then I have as many pages as I was able to fit in this one line on my index for all the page numbers where it appears. And that also helped me utilize my index efficiently. And I didn't have to use up so many lines um, unnecessarily. Now, while on the subject of taking notes, matter of fact, why don't we move into notes? <laughs> um, because I know I take a lot of notes at scrum calls and things like that. What I usually do is when I'm in a meeting and let's say I start my next block of meeting minutes, I'll usually grab three to four pages, um, back to back. So that way I'm not jumping around because if I start, let's say, taking notes for a scrum call and I finish, you know, taking it front to back, then I'm going to immediately jump to another area of the book and that can get confusing. So what I usually do is when I know I'm moving to another section of the book because I ran out of room is I'll take and grab like three or four pages and I'll just dedicate all of those to meeting minutes and then I'll you know, pick up from that point going forward. So that's another great tip so that you don't have too much waste and like items stay together in your book. While on the subject of taking notes, another technique that I'm very, very <laughs> um, fond of is page threading. So because my scrum meeting notes tend to span multiple pages, um, you know, I try to like I said, take three or four pa consecutive pages so that a lot of that information stays together, but it will eventually jump to another area of my bullet journal. So I do page thread. So let's say this is the last page of this particular block. I'll say, oh, okay, um, the previous block was on this page. So let me jump over to that. And then when I jump to that page, I would have also recorded that from here, it jumped to this page over here. So that is a traditional 
bullet journal technique, page threading. Um, and that just saves you time because you don't have to go back to the index to say, oh, you know, this is where I left off, so now I have to go here. So that's a very effective technique. Lastly, um, one of my other favorite techniques um, for meeting minutes, sometimes we meet every day and then other times we might meet every couple of days. So as you're working on things, sometimes things will come up, like there's a question, there's a follow-up, or you have an update regarding the project, um, but you don't want to forget. <laughs> so what I've been doing lately, I used to put it down in my um, dailies and that information was getting lost. So what I'm doing now is I'll just go, knowing that we're going to have this meeting on the next day, I'll just put in a quick note saying, okay, here's all the items that I need to make sure I update the team on. So I make a note of that well in advance and then by the time the meeting day comes around when I flip to that page that information is already there. So that's been really really helpful. Um, moving on to tasks. So tasks generally I track on my daily pages and I use it in a typical bullet journal fashion. I also color code those so I know what tasks belong to which project. But one of my favorite techniques that I've started doing is, you know, I get a lot of emails from a lot of different contacts. And sometimes I need to do a follow up or remember some information that was given to me. And I forget the day that that email arrived. So what I do is that if I get an email that spawns a task, I'll make sure to write down, you know, either the note or the task that I need to perform. And then in parentheses, I'll say, you know, write down who the sender was as well as the date and the time that it arrived. The reason the date and the time is important is if you're one of those folks that manage multiple projects, you know you can get flooded with emails. So just looking at the day, you know, you may have, there might have been an email thread that just went on and on and on. So you don't know which particular email in that email thread has the information that you're looking for. So by recording both the date and the timestamp, um, it makes it easier to locate that information. Sometimes I even have to note down whether it was an email I sent or you know an email I received um, to find the information, but at least that information doesn't get lost. Also, in regard to tasks, there's some tasks that I perform repeatedly. Um, every, you know, every two or three weeks, I have to kick off a sprint. Um, I have to, you know, generate reports. I have to submit a project timesheet. So what I've done is I've taken all those tasks and I've put them down on flag post-it notes. And then what I do is that when I prepare my weekly spread, um, my customized spread usually starts with the weekly calls. I'll take those flags and I'll just put it next to the day that I'm supposed to perform them on. This saves me time because I don't have to keep rewriting this information, um, worrying about that I you know, have to carry it forward. It's repetitive, um, it's regular enough um, in frequency that I know which day it's going to happen on. So that's one way of managing routine or repetitive tasks by putting them on flag post-its. Okay, moving on to calls. Um, like I said before, you know, I keep mentioning a customized layout. I absolutely encourage you to experiment with designing your own layout based on what dominates your workload. When it comes to project management, you know, sometimes you could be almost all day in phone calls. Other times you could be in the field or dealing with clients. Whatever it is that dominates your workload, I highly suggest that you make a note of that and try to think, you know, that's the beauty of the bullet journal. You have a blank canvas so that you can figure out and how you want to track or how you want to manage it. So for me, I generally have to look at my call schedule first. I have a lot of calls with a lot of different groups and a lot of different teams. So what I do is the way I design my weekly layouts is I start off with this page and it has to be on the right. <laughs> I've tried it with putting it on the left and for some reason my brain, it just doesn't click with my brain. So it always has to be on the right at the start of the week. I do Monday through Friday. I color code everything so I know what my schedule is like. 
The second part of my layout on the back of this, I divide this page in half. And what I do is on this, on the left side, I write down all my project updates. Every week I have various folks coming to me telling me what the status of the project is and what phase we're currently in. So I break it down by individual project type. I color code that as well. I write down quick bullets of what the current update is. And that way, if, if someone calls me or if I need to provide a report, I can quickly flip to this page and all this information is already logged here. Next to that, on the right side, I have my weekly tasks. And lately I've been breaking it down by projects as well. So this top half is for my primary project. This bottom half is for my secondary tertiary projects. And I just, you know, write down everything I need to do. And I used to have them all bundled together. So then, you know, once I checked it off, I would then color code it. So I knew which project it was associated with, but I found that it was just easier to group it by project. So this is actually proving to be a little bit more efficient for me. So that's that side of my weekly layout. And then here is where I start off my dailies. So basically I just draw a line. I put, you know, what day of the week and the date. And then I write down um, my bullet journal codes are very, very simple. If it's a square, an open square, it means it's a task I need to perform. Once it's complete, I put a check mark. If I do not complete it and it, it's no longer relevant, I just cross it off. I put an X through it. And if I need to carry it forward to the next day, I put an arrow, a right facing arrow. Anything that occurs throughout the day that's important to remember, I use a bullet, like a circle, filled in circle to make a note. So that's how I differentiate between tasks and notes. And then of course I color code it. And the beauty of this is that I can quickly fit through here. And if somebody says, oh, what was it? Um, you know, did you get, did you hear from this person regarding this project and get this update? I can quickly look and I can zoom in based on the color coding. Now, like I said, I, I realize that this may be busy for a lot of people, but for me, I have to you know, give answers quickly. I have to multitask a lot <laughs> throughout the day. So just having this quick visual where I can zoom in on a color um, has been extremely helpful for me. So that's how I, that is what my custom weekly layout um, has done for me. And, you know, I, I, I tried the beautiful spreads that I see on the internet where people, you know, draw the boxes this way, draw the boxes this way. And it just wasn't working for me. You know, my phone calls were getting lost in my dailies. Um, and really, as long as I can highlight and I know what blocks of the day I'm going to be busy because I'm going to be tied up on, on the phone, I can kind of fill in the empty gaps between with these tasks. So scanning my weekly calls list is extremely helpful. And I realize that by singling at singling it out and dedicating a layout to it, um, proved to be more effective than trying to follow, you know, uh, traditional, uh, layouts or, you know, uh, ways that other people were using it. So my, like I said, my suggestion would be try to really think about what dominates your day. What is it that's constantly calling you for attention and try to figure out a way of creating a custom layout that works for you. Um, case in point, my project updates. I was constantly throughout the day, throughout the week, being asked about this project, that project. And it wasn't until I did this that I was like, oh, okay, you know, I have a quick answer for you. So that's proven to be extremely helpful. Another uh, comment on if you, if your, if your day is appointment driven, um, I tend to <laughs> get overbooked a lot. So sometimes I may have two, maybe three or four calls for the same time slot. So that's, that's problematic. Obviously I need to prioritize and, and figure out where my time needs to go. So whenever I have a schedule conflict, what I do is I, what I do is at the beginning of the week, I write down all my calls for the week and I write them in time order. So it, it starts from early in the morning through the afternoon. 
all my conflicts will appear next to each other. So if I have a one o'clock and a one o'clock, I know that's a problem. What I do to make it even more apparent is I'll draw a bracket starting from the first phone call that starts in that time slot and I'll draw down to the second one. So that way I know, oh, that's a time block that I need to make a decision. Where am I gonna be at that time? So that's been really helpful for me. Also, I've been tracking any add-on phone calls. Um, there's been times, you know, sometimes you look back on your week and you think to yourself, where did the time go? Well, there's been times, you know, I started off with five calls and then I ended up with 10. <laughs> um, and it was because, you know, someone called me or I had to call someone and you spend time on those calls. So that takes up part of your time. So this way I can, you know, uh, keep track of absolutely everything that's going on. So these are my scheduled calls and these are my add-on calls that kind of appeared throughout the day. So that's been really helpful for me. What else? Um, in regard to scrum notes, going back to notes for a second, some meeting notes I may have to record or archive so that other teams or clients have access to them. So what I do is I process them. And the way I do that is, you know, I simply write the name of the phone call and then the date, right? But sometimes I have to transcribe them. So what I do is once I've transcribed it on the computer, I'll take a check mark and I'll put it next to the date. And what that tells me quickly is if I don't have time, let's say I don't get to transcribing the minutes until the end of the week, I'll quickly see where I left off. So that's been really important for me. Lastly, in regard to notes, like I said, there were some notes that I threw in the back of the bullet journal, and these are important notes. So back here, I, you know, for certain phases of the project, you might have to perform specific tasks, or you might have to in, in update certain artifacts or deal with different folks or different teams. So I have all that information captured in the back. I can quickly flip through it. I don't have to worry about digging through 600 pages to find it. Um, also another thing that I created back here that has been extremely helpful is I created a project timeline. If you have projects that span a couple of years, I have one, um, actually two or three projects that spanned, um, two to three years. And I really needed to keep track of when certain milestones had occurred. So what I did is I created a two page spread. Again, this goes back to experimenting, evaluate what dominates your workload, what information do you need to know when, and then develop a layout around it. So here I have a project that's been going on for two years. And what I did was starting from November, 2016, I recorded all the information I had up until November of 2017. And then I just made a note of the major milestones. Major milestones being, you know, when did we have to get an approval? When did we have to uh, undergo a certain review? When did we close a sprint? Um, whatever it was, or, you know, when something else happened. But here I have the quick and dirty, you know, two week timeline, um, two year timeline. And then if I needed to go back and say, when did that happen? When did we reach that milestone? That's when it happened. Now to keep this short and sweet, what I did was I put down the month and the year, and then I just wrote the to and from dates for each week. So I, and that was just to keep it brief. So, you know, like this was from October 31st through, uh, through November 6th, and then uh, November 7th through November 13th. So I just did the start and end dates of each week. So there's generally four or five weeks in a month. So that's how I was quickly able to recap it in a two page layout. So this has been extremely helpful. And I think if you're the type of person that manages multiple projects, especially if they span over the course of a couple of years, having something like this in your bullet journal would be very helpful. Lastly, um, you know, <laughs> when you're dealing with project schedules, um, you have certain milestones or targets that you're trying to hit. As much as I'd love to write it in pen because I'm confident that we're going to meet those milestones, we all know that generally speaking, things change. So what I tend to do is that's why I have my mechanical pencil is because I like to pencil those in. I'm still 
striving to reach those targets, but I may not always reach them. And if something changes, what I'll do is I can easily just erase it or move it, you know, once it gets rescheduled. So that's another helpful tip. So I believe I hit all my main points. Um, you know, I used to use a traditional planner for work and it kind of worked. It kind of didn't. I tried the bullet journal and at first I was skeptical, but I got to say, I'm actually a believer now um, because they're, you know, everyone's job is different. You deal with different um, challenges, different folks, different circumstances, you know, having that blank slate where you can just turn to a brand new page and just say, okay, you know what? I'm going to look at it this way. However it is that your brain processes it. Th there's a lot to be said for that. So uh, I'm, I'm a believer, you know, and I have almost 600 pages to prove it. I highly recommend it. So if you're the type of person that deals with multiple projects, um, hopefully you have found some of my tips helpful. This is one of my favorite tips, regardless of book or planner. I mentioned this in my other video. I like to use monthly tabs to mark my monthly pages. So I have those across the top. This is from the previous year. And then for 2018, I actually had to add those pages in going from back to front. So I added them here on the side. In addition to those side tabs, whenever I create my pages for the week, I always have a weekly page where I summarize my calls. So that has a weekly tab. Then I have project updates, weekly tasks, and then this is where my dailies begin. So to quickly jump to my dailies, I have a bookmark on that one. And then if I need to refer to the monthly overview, I have that also marked with a monthly tab. So these have different shapes. Um, the month, these monthly tabs are actually pre-printed. And then I also keep track of change control tickets because I work with software projects. So I added top tabs for those in case I need to jump to those pages quickly. It's very strategic. Um, I really don't even have to read what's how the tab is labeled to find the information I need because I know more or less the position of it and where it is. So it makes it easy for me to find. In addition, since I mentioned I don't use these bookmarks, what I did was I added some of my own. I basically took a paper clip and you can see my bookmarks. I have four that are sticking out of the bottom here. And what I'll do is I'll just remove them temporarily. I took a paper clip and I took two ribbons that were extra long and folded it in half. And then I took this paper clip and I clipped it to the back cover. And what I do with these ribbons is to mark my pages for where I left off on meeting minutes. So my primary project, I actually just colored the bottom of the ribbon and I can quickly flip to that page so I can continue taking notes. And then the other one is for my secondary project. The yellow ones are for two other team um, project calls where I also take minutes. So all in all, I have four bookmarks so that I can quickly turn to a page. And again, I don't really need to look for it. It, it also is much more efficient than looking at the index and trying to locate that specific page. I just grab the bookmark, flip it to the right page and I'm ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed watching this update to my work bullet journal. I know a lot of us struggle at work with managing multiple projects and you know, it's a, it's a trial and error kind of process. If you guys have tips and hacks and tricks and techniques, I would also love to hear <laughs> what you're doing with your bullet journal. So please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and check out my blog at littledevet.com for more information. I have more content lined up for you, so stay tuned. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, bye.